Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Greg Lumbison, also known as the Iron Mason, and today we are going to do a rapid fire one, two, three, four, five book reviews. Let's get to it. So the first one is going to be salvaged by Madeline Rue. This book is great. I love the character. Very well thought out. She's got a lot going on. She's very complex. She's dealing with some issues that become more clear as the book comes on. And she is a space janitor tasked with cleanup of deaths, basically, of anyone that gets killed. It gets you from the first line. I'm going to read it for you. Rosalind had endured disappointing birthdays before, but never won an ankle-deep corpse sludge. And if that doesn't get you from the first line, I don't know what will. The aliens in here, well thought out. The progress of the story is also very well done. And the surprises and payoffs are also very well thought out. I'm not sure if it's a standalone. I think it is because there's an epilogue. I wish it wasn't because I could read more about this story in the series as long as she was putting books out about it. It's very good. I hope that you guys pick it up. It's called Salvaged by Madeline Rue. The second is Tyler Whiteside's The Thousand Deaths of Arter Ben. I don't know what to say about this book other than it's freaking great. Dragons, dragon dung, magic. High stakes, it's a heist. The IQ of Tyler Whiteside, he's way ahead. You have no idea where it's going. And when you think the stakes can't get any higher, if you think you've figured out the twists, the turns, the plots of everything that's going on, you haven't. And the ending, total surprise. Never saw that coming. Amazing. Absolutely phenomenal book. The third is going to be The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is the second in the series. It's a Nordic fantasy of gods and men. There's different people, different cultures, different kingdoms vying for power. There's a rebirth of ancient evil, and it's how are you going to survive? What are you going to do? The characters gripping each character's journey gripping. I hate that every chapter is a different character because sometimes it gets really gripping. It's, it's mm, grippy. And like you cannot wait for what comes next. And then you have a new chapter and this new character. It's like, it reminds, it gives me like PTSD of Isaac Asimov where the writing of the character is so well developed in Isaac Asimov's and right when things start to get good and you get to the point where there might be repercussions, it's 200 years later and there's no closure. They will live on. Our world will live on. You will not. John Gwynn, however, is not that bad because it's just, you got to wait a few chapters, two, three chapters, and then it gets back to it. But sometimes you just can't wait. Sometimes you just got to flip and read that next chapter of that character. Would not recommend, because if you did that, you'd miss stuff. But each chapter has a definite purpose and a reason, and there's stakes in each chapter and a payoff at the end, and oh, it's well, so well done. The third book comes out in October. Would highly recommend getting the whole series. It's great. Number four is going to be The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. The first, the second, the third book, all great. Once I read the first book and fell in love with the character, I had to pick them all up. I had to, and I had to finish them. They're phenomenal. Fantastic. The character or Naomi, either of them have ADHD. And as someone with ADHD, totally relatable. She's got a lot going on in her head. And it's hilarious because she wants to be good, but everything in the world is telling her to be bad. And it's such a unique perspective. And the way that she ties it together and the character herself is hilarious. The ending of The Last Graduate is harrowing, to say the least. It is a very dangerous world that she has made in this book, and it's well worth it. The next one 
is The Night and Its Moon by Piper CJ. This book I have mixed feelings on. Number one, I like how the story progresses. I like the journey that the characters are going on. I have an issue with the sexuality in the book. Not because of what the sexuality is. I don't care about a character's sexuality in books. I have an issue when you're exploring the relationship and the romantic relationship of the characters and their sexuality when they are children. That I have an issue with. You could have fast-forwarded and explored that when they were adults. That would have been fine. But exploring it while they're children is just ick. Just had an icky feeling about it. There are some things in The Night and Its Moon where it's like, okay, these people are going through some stuff. And there's a surprise to one of the characters and what her powers may be. The journeys that they go on as they get along is good. And the plot of what they're trying to prevent is also good. So I would give it like eight, seven, eight out of 10 stars. Again, those things that I have issue with, they're issues for me. They might not be for everybody. Other than that, pretty damn good story. The last thing I'm going to talk about is my book, Waking Spirit. I am currently writing it. I'm 23 chapters in, 80,000 words. I just finished, it's probably going to be five chapters of the history of the planet. And I think I've done a really good job so far of keeping the truth of the planet at the periphery so that when the reveal comes of how these things came to be and the source of the magic technology and things in the book actually you become aware of them i think i've done a really good job of making that like an aha moment and like just i can't wait to get it done to get it edited and to get it out to you guys the summer is when i do that I am starting my senior year of my bachelor's and the first year of my master's program this fall. Hopefully, I'll be done with my master's within a year after this coming. I'll have the summer to write. And I hope by next summer or the summer after to have the book completed. It's going to be a huge book. Tyler Whiteside's, I think, let me just double check on how many pages his is. It's a thick book. It's like three fingers wide, right? But it's only 734 pages. Mine's probably going to be like bigger than the Bible. It's big. I I might have to cut some down. The pacing might be off a little bit, but each chapter is only five pages, single spaced in book format. So that way you put a bookmark in it. There's a couple things I got to do, but I'm really excited to get that out to you guys. It's so cool to be able to bring a story to life that you are so interested in exploring and being able to show people. And I can't wait for it to be done so you guys can actually get to experience that. Everybody I've had read the book has had good reviews so far. They hate the people they're supposed to hate. They're iffy about the people they're supposed to be iffy about. A lot of people are getting led on a journey of discovery, which is cool that those things are being shown through their reading of it. Anyway, enough about my book. I hope you guys pick these books up. The link is down in the description, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.